from the great halls of their house. There are assembled three who hope to one day be the world's greatest driving heroes. Created from the cosmic legends of the universe comes our team captain, The Vision, Bill Fisher, their soon-to-be Wonder Woman, Vicky Fisher, and our Batman, the master of tools, gadgets, and all things mechanical, our mild-mannered, soon-to-be billionaire, Alan Danvers. Their mission, to fight injustice, share what is right and wrong, to get you out of your house and come out racing with them and serve all mankind. They are the Garage Heroes in Training team. Welcome to the Garage Heroes in Training podcast. I'm going to be your host for this episode, and my name is Bill. Who's hosting? I'm Vicki. That's it. We're done. That was easy. <laughs> yes. Nope. Yes, it, it's college time, so I'm sure that the other two are working with their kids. <laughs> or, or Alan saw something shiny. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> it, it ends up being the same thing. But to make up for just Vicky and I, we have a guest. We have a very special guest. He is the lead instructor for Dirtfish Rally School. He is we're going to teach us a little bit about rally, a little bit about why we want to do it, what it will help us with, what techniques we can get to. They are located, unfortunately, in Washington State, which is probably as far away as we can get from here. And they're in a town that I have no chance of pronouncing, so we'll work on that later. And they're in the Cascade Mountains. We're willing to go out there. We just got to be able to fly because this COVID thing's getting in the way. But with that, we have Nate Tennis here. Welcome, Nate. Well, thank you very much. Happy to be here. So first question, how do we pronounce the town you're in? <laughs> uh, Snoqualmie. Oh, yeah. Snoqualmie. Yep, yeah. snow nice. wall me. Yes. It is spelled nothing like that. Okay. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. Is it like of... Chargagagag? <laughs> yeah. <pretty much. laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> pretty much. Right. Pretty much the lake near Thompson. Say it, Vicky. Chargagagag men chargagagag chapunugungamag. Yes. Is the, ta- is the town name. <laughs> snow call me pales in comparison. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is true, but uh, I can't say either one. So. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so. Just in case we got a few new listeners or somebody who is not uh, frequent with your background, could you tell us a little bit about your background in racing? Yeah, sure. Well, um, aside from all of my fans, which would be probably just my parents, uh, there probably aren't a lot of folks who do know who I am. Uh, we, we, no. <laughs> sounds like we got two new listeners. Hello, parents. <laughs> exactly. You skyrocketed. Our, <laughs> that's right. We're doubled. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, <laughs> no, so uh, I'm a rally nut through and through. I'm lucky to enough uh, enough to have been around rally since uh, since I was a young guy. I had uh, family members who did it. My aunt and uncle uh, rallied for a number of years, uh, so I sort of grew up around it. Um, my uncle worked at a, a repair shop in Seattle that specialized in sobs, and a bunch of the guys that uh, worked there also started rallying. Um, and my first job was to like sweep the floors and be the shop kid, uh, on the weekends. And so I helped my uncle and his team out and then just sort of stuck around and, and swept the floors and got hand me down parts and got my own car, uh, when I was 17 and have been rallying ever since it's now 23 years that I've been rallying Ooh. on my own. Three years? 23. 23. Oh, 23. I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, years. he's been doing this almost as long as some of my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> longer, so, than, longer than I haven't, actually. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. What age did you get behind the wheel for rally? Uh, 17 uh, okay. was when I picked up my car and then turned 18 and actually competed in my first event when I was 18. Okay. Nice. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, for those who are familiar with, uh, with rally, what is it? Well, rally is, uh, it's a basically timed events and the cars are released at uh, basically intervals and you run against the clock. Uh, You run on a real road that's closed down to public traffic. So it's not necessarily a a track or anything like that. Um, And the surface surface can be anything from pavement. You can use a track, but mostly it's real roads, be it pavement, uh, gravel, snow, uh, in the middle of the desert, whatever. Um, so you're timed the length of the course is anywhere from less than a mile to about 30 miles somewhere in that range Um, you run the stage you drive to the next one run to the next stage and then your time 
collected over the day will be uh, what how you're rated against your competitors. And then sometimes events are one day, sometimes they're multi-day, uh, and a lot of times your time over all two or three days will count towards your overall uh, finish. So, so are, are, <laughs> is the rally racing, and this is a really stupid question, okay. There are no stupid uh, questions. Just this stupid, stupid, just stupid podcast hosts. <laughs> <laughs> no, just All smart right. ass answers. So, <laughs> so is this the same thing that I see on the videos of the cars that are being launched as there are people like lining up alongside the road and yeah. they're flying through and sometimes they kind of miss the turn and end up in the ditch and, or they bounce in the ditch and out and then they're running again? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, okay. absolutely, absolutely. Unless it's not like full on off road racing, which kind of has has a bit of that, like you know Baja and that sort of thing. That that uh, tends to have a lot of spectators and and not a lot of <laughs> guardrail. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah. The the cool thing about rally is it's very accessible uh, in that you can go to an area and see all of the cars. You, you're welcome to to jump in and and see the the competitors as they're in their service area for the most part. Um, so it's very uh, spectator friendly and accessible in that regard. So um, traditionally, as it became more popular and the world in general became more populated, then there had to be a lot more restrictions put in. And there, were, there was the inevitable way back in the day that, that uh, created the need for a lot more restrictions for sure. Right. So is your course a set course or, or is it something that you have to have a passenger with? So you do have a passenger. Uh, oh, the course. I, I would be awful already. I could tell yeah. you. <laughs> you and me both. Uh, despite what my so job is. Sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> despite what my, my job is, I'm a terrible co-driver. So a co-driver or a navigator uh, basically reads back the information uh, about the, the course that they're running on. Uh, sometimes it's secret. They've never been on that road at all. Although now we've uh, transitioned primarily all the way over to uh, a predetermined route that the crew gets a chance to see usually twice. Uh, so they drive it once at low speed and they make sort of like shorthand for what they, they want to hear at speed. Uh, and they're doing this all at low speed on open open roads. Um, and then they get a second chance to go see that um, and make refinements to their notes. And then when the road is closed and they're able to go as fast as possible, the co-driver's job is to deliver the information when the driver needs it. So there's a, it's absolutely a team uh, sport. The performance of the driver is directly impacted by the co-driver and, and vice versa. The, the co-driver uh, has to trust that the driver is going to listen and respond when the information is given to him. Okay. Her. So what is the car? Okay. Two questions. Um, yeah. Number one, what is the distance usually that you travel? Uh, for one event, you mean? Yes. Uh, uh, it really varies. So there, there are what are called rally sprints, which are um, sort of like a very hyper condensed rally that usually takes place on uh, one area. Like so, Dirtfish here, we have 300 acres on which to play, so we can we can produce uh, events here that are uh, one one little rally, and we can run multiple stages all in one little area. But I mean, they're, they can be up to a couple of hundred miles. Um, back in the 80s and prior to that, they were 500 stage miles uh, over four or five days. Um, so endurance is a huge factor uh, when rallies concern. And that was always the, the, the tradition uh, leading up to recently where that just became too much. And so they started making them shorter and shorter, plus also compacting them onto a weekend instead of you know, across a, a whole week like they used to be. Right. So is there any particular car setup that you have to have? Uh, depends on the, the venue. Um, so in the U.S., most of our events are on gravel. Um, so the cars are set up for that. Uh, we have, um, you know, within that, there are lots of different types of gravel, just like there's lots of different types of pavement. So uh, if it's slippery pavement, you have a different setup than, than if it's a, a grippy pavement. Um, for us, the Northwest up here, we have roads, ironically, very similar to what's in the UK, which is pretty hard, uh, gnarly gravel, uh, for lack of a better term. Uh, and so it's uh, pretty rough on equipment and also pretty bumpy. Um, 
you get more back east and there are a lot more sandy roads um, that are smooth and therefore very fast. So you can build a car that's a little lower to the ground um, and, and doesn't have to withstand the abuse from underneath the car, uh, which is like a third dimension you don't think about on tarmac. <laughs> right. Well, what about the interior? Um, so I mean, do you are, need like, do you need like roll cages? Or? Oh yeah. 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 hundred okay. percent. Yep. 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 There are full sanctioned events. Like there's the world rally championship is, is, uh, an FIA sanctioned event, uh, over here in the U S we have the American rally association and that's a, a USAC sanctioned event. So, um, we have a lot of, uh, top drivers from the world who come over here and, and also other drivers who are bringing equipment from, uh, from around the world to come and, and compete here. So we have some very good drivers, very good cars and really cool stuff that, uh, that is absolutely top notch and requires all of the safety equipment that, uh, that you would on the street, uh, plus an additional, uh, seat. <laughs> oh, okay. So, yeah. um, are there chapters within the rally? Sure. Yeah, there's, uh. So they're usually called uh, legs or segments, whatever you want to call it. So um, a one competitive section is called a, uh, a special stage. Um, and you drive on public street, which is, which is pretty uh, unique, but you're timed the whole time during, during the event. So um, you leave the main time control uh, and then you're given a particular amount of time to drive at legal speeds to the, your first closed down section. When that section is ready to go, then you're given a countdown and you leave at a particular time. And the time at the end of that is your competitive amount of time overall. Then you're given another amount of time to make it to your next transit section. Um, and any time that you arrive early or late to either one of those uh, checkpoints, you get penalized. So usually everyone shows up early, lines up, gets ready to go, and then, and then uh, checks in on their minute. If something breaks or you run into something and have to fix the car, then you end up being uh, potentially late and then therefore penalized to it. So on, on, you sound like you do some for several hundred miles, which I imagine that's point A to point B. Yeah. Correct. So yeah. How, how do you guys manage that with cops and speed? <laughs> So the, the only time that we're running fast, as fast as we can, is when it's on a closed section. Okay. And when, when you get to the end of that closed section, you absolutely do the speed limit. In fact, there are lots of penalties uh, to keep you from speeding. So if you get uh, if you get no. a ticket, <laughs> you get a ticket. I'm right here. Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> if you get uh, a ticket or like the organizers see you getting pulled over or anything like that, then you get uh, time penalties. You get uh, extra additional monetary fines. Because uh, the, the general concept is we want to be good ambassadors for our sport. And if we're running through the neighborhood, um, that's likely to make people upset. And then they won't allow us to come back and race on their roads. So mm. it's in everyone's best interest to, while you're not racing, to drive as slow and, uh, and safe and sane as possible and save it for the woods, so to speak. Mm. Right. So I imagine what they would do is they would just, for, and I'm only guessing, is that mm -hmm. from point A to point B, uh, the factors of the race, if you have to be uh, within the speed limit, uh, how do they make that challenging? Or well, is it that, just trying to get your car to survive and then gas yeah. and then maybe weird roads they put you on, maybe? Well, that <laughs> part isn't so much. There There used to be a lot more like gotchas and they'd, they'd make uh, make it a tricky little course or they'd, they'd make it a little bit uh, hard to find the next destination. Now it's just simply uh, point A to B. It's, you know, they give you, if it takes 30 minutes to get there, they'll give you an hour so that they want to discourage speeding as much as possible. And then you just show up before your check-in point, wait until it's time to check in. And that could be a half an hour. You know, if it, if it took you 30 minutes, then great. You got 30 minutes to sit and rest. Okay. Um, and then, then you race for your section, which is, you know, under a mile up to 30 miles. Then you're done with that one. Then you transit to the next little section. And, and usually you'll run two or three of those uh, special stages. And then you go to a service area and you, you check in and out of that service area the same way. Um, and typically you're given 20 minutes to, to fix whatever you broke on the car. <laughs> Which sometimes happens quite a bit, I'm sure. Yeah, this yeah. is not a, a sport that's easy on cars, that's for sure. No. So what is it, what is it that you specialize in? Um, 
hanging out and, and looking good. <laughs> I'm sorry. I couldn't. Well, help. well done. It was too easy. <laughs> No, no, no. That was horrible, horrible, horrible. It looks like at least you got a haircut, not like me. <laughs> I know. It's the, it's the Floby. I just, I just line that thing up with a vacuum cleaner. It's a COVID head. That's right. That's right. I'm working on David uh, Cassidy here. Right. <laughs> so, uh, so for us at, at Dirtfish, um, we're – which – it's been an amazing uh, opportunity to be a part of it, but it's, it's, we specialize in, in, in basically getting people the, the initial seat time and teaching them the fundamentals of, of driving on a loose surface. So, um, and that's how, uh, I know that's on the, the list of things to chat about, but, uh, that's sort of how we work with, uh, predominantly a lot more pavement people than we work with, uh, like rally people. Mm -hmm. There just flat aren't a lot of rally people out there in, the, okay. in North America anyway. Right. And we understand. I, I mean, yeah. if if you really want to think about it, Vicky, uh, the amount of times our cars break and we're not even running over rocks and gravel. And, <laughs> you know, yeah. We may never start a race. <laughs> never mind. So what are you racing right now? Me personally, <clears throat> my desk chair. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And you're doing. You're excellent. funny. Yeah, that's well, you know. <laughs> no, so I've uh, I grew up around sobs. I've I've raced sobs forever. It's been a, a an inexpensive way of, of racing, as you know. Racing's cheap. I'm pretty much doing it all on my own. So, um, so I I get the opportunity to do things here or there. Uh, but but rallies my my big passion, and and so that's why I still haven't finished my own my own personal car. Oh, okay. We, yeah. we understand. Again. Again. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're never yeah. finished. I mean, you know. Yeah. No, honestly, the cars are never done. Right. No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. So, so with the Dirt Fish School, you guys have been going for a bit there. And um, I guess the the one thing that we see whenever we go out and we go to a different school, we could, we've been to um, like an autocross school, we go to HPDs all the time. There's yeah. always a balance between, you know, we, we refer to it as uh, there's places you go and, and basically you're just getting seat time and doing laps. And then mm -hmm. there's places where there's like instruction and, and learning opportunities and you actually improve as opposed to just getting more seat time or testing yeah. your car. So I'm assuming since most of the people who come to you are asphalt drivers, mm -hmm. just by number of people. Yeah. This sounds funny. <laughs> They're yeah. asphalt drivers. Well, you know, it's sometimes you don't know how fast you're going. So it's your yeah. asphalt. Because you, you don't have your anyway, yeah. um, so I'm assuming like that, you're going there. there you go. You know, I mean, it's, it's fitting right in with the rest of this podcast, yeah, so we're, right. we're doing okay. So I'm assuming that you guys have to have a pretty high ratio of of actual learning and instruction, and I was just wondering how that how what your approach was to that. Well, I mean, um, we, we try to cover as many of the bases of, of learning as, as possible. So, I mean, we we start every program with uh, with some classroom, uh, but really. The, the most success and, and the most, uh, I guess, development we can make is always going to be in the car with actually doing. Um, but we also uh, include a lot of observation and, and discussion points along that as well. So we'll start with, uh, we'll start with uh, classroom instruction. And for us, the, our longest classroom discussion is no more than 40 minutes. And that's at the start of like a three day. Okay. Um, so really, we want to instill some concepts of it, but the best way to learn is going to be in the car. Um, okay. And then we'll take a group down, and um, uh, our typical class size is 10 people, and we'll have five, uh, five cars and five instructors in the car with someone. So we give real-time feedback the entire time that they're in the car. Um, we'll demonstrate whichever exercise or course that they are going to drive on, and then we switch seats and, and then, uh, then ride along with them. Nice. Um, and then for the folks who are not in the car, we have the same person who led the, the classroom portion outside to sort of help uh, guide what's happening from the outside of the car, which um, actually ends up being very beneficial so that someone can see, okay, that's what the brake lights are, are supposed to be doing <laughs> instead of what I've been doing. I'm supposed yeah. to use, I'm supposed to use yeah. them. Okay. That's yes, good. yes, yes, yes. Okay. So just a little bit of background. We had this really yeah. nice scheduled event that got canceled. I, I don't remember why some, some weak reason recently, but we were, <laughs> we were going to go to a winter driving event with a skid pad. Hmm. 
and it got canceled and we're still looking for a skid pad event that we haven't gotten to. And I started thinking, you know, it's, it's going to be tough to have a winter driving event in like July or August, which we're in. Mm. So I was thinking rally cause it's got less friction. So, mm -hmm. so would that be teaching similar characteristics of driving? Cause a lot of our drivers, one of them who's a host on this podcast at this moment right now, um, doesn't like to have the car slip. Mm. It's not so, that I don't like it. It's just that it never I haven't does. done it. I haven't done it enough <laughs> to be comfortable. <laughs> yeah. And, and, uh, honestly, that's the majority of our, our customers. Um, uh, like I mentioned, like there aren't a lot of rally folks. We're here to help support uh, rally folks, you know, uh, improve, get the, get the taste of it. But uh, predominantly, most of the folks that we're working with are those that are trying to get faster on the track. Um, mm. uh, or they bought a really fan fancy car and they don't understand why they're back of the pack while the other guys are, uh, guys or gals are, are way ahead of them. So, um, yes, that's what we work with. You can slide the car, uh, you can uh, understand and develop that car, uh, car control. And one of the major benefits of that is we're at uh, considerably lower speed. So there's another comfort level there as well. So you can learn a lot of car control at 40 or 50 miles an hour, which is pretty much the max of what our, our lower level classes are at um, without having to worry about wadding the car up uh, at, you know, 130 next to a wall. Uh, so you can produce those same results at a much lower, more comfortable pace. Um, and you're constantly sliding, especially depending on the, uh, on the car. A uh, real wheel drive we car is never rally. <laughs> you, you said constantly <laughs> sliding. So that would be 100%. That would be 100% <laughs> opposite of yes. what Vicky does on the racetrack, which is constantly <laughs> not sliding. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. She just, uh, she just past, learned that yes. the uh, tires can sing. She's yes. never heard it, but, you know, she's heard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I was so concerned about making my car float, which if it's floating, it means it has more to give. <laughs> so yeah. working yeah. on that. You know, the yeah. old smooth is fast. Yeah. Well, too smooth is not fast. <laughs> That's right. No. So. Yeah, but but I'm sure you're courteous enough to help signal, got the yeah. turn signal oh, on the whole absolutely. time for other drivers, right? Just yeah. to make sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, so I'm my, competitive. <laughs> so my favorite but, story is on her left arm after her first two races, okay. there's, there's like these stripes on her arm. And we couldn't figure out what they were. It was bruises. Look like a tiger. Look like tiger <laughs> stripes. And we're trying to figure out. We thought it was like dirt or oil or something from the cars or whatever. Because, you know, the cars we drive are not exactly uh, s spectacular. Um, it turned out that she was pointing by very vigorously and she was getting bruises on her arm from the door because we oh. took all the interior out it's just that one strip of metal so she's got tiger stripes from and i said oh. listen <laughs> if you were faster you wouldn't be I don't, so i don't do that anymore no. actually yeah. i go after oh, cars hey there you go, there uh -oh. you go. There three you years go. in yeah so okay back to interior now um talk to me more about co-piloting mm -hmm. and and I have one question. Why would anybody want to do that? <laughs> right. And how much Dramamine do they need to take? Because I know that if uh, there's this whole weird thing, and I don't know if, if you guys have experienced it with your drivers, is mm -hmm. that there's a difference between driving and being a passenger, mm -hmm. where it feels like the passenger feels all the nausea, but the mm -hmm. driver does not. <laughs> <laughs> yep, 100%. I am one of those people. Yeah. Three laps on a you. track as a passenger, and, and I was ready to hurl. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's, I'd blame your driver. <laughs> it wasn't me. It was not me. <laughs> yeah, he was, it was he bad. Was, he was yeah. much better than I was. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, you know, uh, bless him. It's, it's like most folks who help support races. I, I can't do it myself either. Um, reading in the car is not for me. Uh, the other thing about rallying that's a little interesting is, is because we're on a loose surface, you don't get the G loading so much uh, okay. so that tends to not mess with your stomach so much. That being said, actually being out in the woods and trying to read, uh, like that, um, I can't do that myself. Um, so it does take a special, <laughs> it doesn't type. sound like it's that much fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I should say for those that uh, that are into that, it's it's just as much fun as the driver. 
And it tends to attract a different personality also. So like more of the analytical side. Right. I was just going to say that more, more of a data person would probably be your, your sidekick. Yeah. And they're, and, and in a sense, they're sort of in charge because you, they have to keep you on time and they're monitoring when to leave, when, to, when it's time to go and like get in the car. And they're also monitoring the driver, making sure they're, they're not, their foot isn't buried to the floor the entire time. So, <laughs> right. So now when you have that co-pilot, what is usually, what are they using? Are they using like a cell phone or are they using a map? Well, I mean, does anybody use a map anymore? But I mean, are, are they using uh, anything digital? Um, yeah, so the, the route is predetermined um, mm -hmm. by the organizer. So you basically, uh, the only time that you really use a map is beforehand to make out your plan of, of how you're going to uh, do recce or reconnaissance for the, the race itself. Um, it helps uh, to keep the rest of the team uh, apprised of what's happening as well, because uh, you have your service crew and, and the other guys who are, are helping along that line. Uh, but. But really, the route is already determined, so all you need to do is stick to the schedule um, and arrive at, at the time you're supposed to be there uh, at the correct time. Right. Um, so the only real digital things that we will use on a fairly regular basis is a, is a super accurate odometer um, to help you um, know when turns are coming up and then also to, to help uh, ensure that you're on the correct uh, course at the correct time. Okay. Yeah. So, so let's blow Vicky's mind just a little bit. So pretend that your navigator's talking to you and you're going through a, a tricky little section. What would he be saying? Uh, right three, 100, caution over crest. Left three, keep in, don't cut. <laughs> Those sorts of things. Oh, boy. Now, because I said keep in, don't cut, that's, uh, there might be a few... Uh, rally nerds out there are going to give me some crap about that. Okay. <laughs> all right. What does all that mean? But your parents like you, so don't worry. They'll be yeah, fine. that's right. That's right. Well, they've barely been in a rally car anyway. So, uh, so that's just, that's just lingo, yeah. huh? Yeah. Yeah. So um, most, I mean, every team has their own system, but as a general uh, setup, folks usually use a grading system of left or right. Uh, that's a, that's a sharp one. That's a yeah, um, that, well, sometimes that's tough. Right, exactly. <laughs> you exactly. What do you mean? No, my you other would, right. You use your hands. <laughs> Left is. <laughs> my mother uh, would be in the tree. Right. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, and then it's a gradient gradient system of one uh, to six. So a one is a super sharp corner. Uh, two, three, four, five, six. Um, that six is a slight corner that maybe you don't even need to break for, but at least you might need to position the car uh, through the corner for that. Beyond that, you have distances, and we're all uh, on the metric system, so your distances are, you know, 150, you know, 60, whatever, however uh, minute Look. detail you want. And then stuff like don't cut or keep in or uh, over crest, those all affect what's going to happen to the car, so you want to know what's happening before you get there. Do they ever say, oh, my God, Cliff left or, you know? Uh, well, I mean, you guys know if there's some, if they say something on the left, your eyes go left and then yeah. your hands follow. So, yeah. <laughs> so you, you really don't say that. Um, I, I don't want to know about it. We call them exposures. Um, uh, huh. so if there's a, something on the outside that, that, uh, that you, bad, bad day. Yeah. It's, it's pretty much, and we'll use a caution and usually there's a, a, a rating system. So single caution is, uh, you know, something small that might bend your car, mm -hmm. double caution will break your car, triple caution might break your life. So mm -hmm. um, if you hear, I really only listen to triple cautions. Um, actually, I tell my co-driver not to tell me anything other than triple caution because <laughs> that's just that's just too much crap to listen to. I only Personally. need to know when I'm going to die. Yes, exactly. Okay, exactly. that works. Um, no, and, uh, and some people say easy right, easy left, 90 right, 90 left, you know, all that stuff. And it's, it's yeah. as detailed or as little detail as you want to hear in the heat of battle. So how many people are usually on a team besides just you and the car? Do you guys have a backup team that are running behind you with a trailer and navigation stuff like that too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the, the small teams are, uh, you know, sometimes it's uh, load up a couple of spares and, and throw it in somebody else's car and, and or, or service rig and, and do all the service yourself, which is possible and a little risky because rally car sometimes a lot of times doesn't drive home. Uh, 
Uh, <laughs> Whoops. Uh, two of the medium teams will have like friends or maybe even hire somebody like a, a mechanic or something like that to help them wrench uh, at, at different uh, spectator air, uh, sorry, service areas. Um, two fully fledged, like the Subaru team will show up with professional mechanics working on professional cars that are, uh, you know, top level uh, people. So, so just so like you, uh, road racing. So when you race those guys, what I would recommend you do is we'll talk about our schedule and you tell them that the race got rescheduled and tell them to go to our place and we'll yeah. use those guys. And then the Subaru guys will be just so far behind you because, yeah. you know, exactly. they're exactly. soft. They're soft. <laughs> so do you, do you switch in and out drivers also? Uh, typically or, no, no. Okay. Um, some, sometimes, usually, traditionally, I should say, it'll be the driver's the driver and the co-driver's the co-driver. Uh, sometimes as, as teams are getting going, or if it's, you know, friends going out, um, having fun, they'll share the cost of the car and also share the, the driving duties. Um, so one day, one person will drive and then the next day, the other person will drive, uh, which is a pretty cool option. Yeah. It seems good. Yeah. So, so if we were going to try rallying as cross training for, yeah. for, you know, that, that makes it seem like we have a focus and we're good at one of these things. It, it's just, we're trying to get better. Because, you know, Garage Heroes in training. Hey, we, I like right. how you put that yeah. cross-training because we do yeah. do a lot of different kinds of racing. Yes, and but not just cross-training implies that we're good at one of them, and we're still looking for that one. So maybe it's rally. Who knew? Um, so, so what would we learn? Like, would, 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 we, would it be similar to what we should know when we're road racing, or are or the different skills and areas stressed different, or... Uh, it's it's pretty different. The end goal is the same. You want to be as smooth as possible and, and hit your, your apexes and your lines as, as often as possible. Uh, try not to go off the road. That's another another important Good plan. Good plan. <laughs> it's usually an important one. Yeah. But <laughs> the fact that, yeah. The fact that we incorporate a slide into our cornering is uh, is where things are, are quite different. Um, and how much slide, how long the slide is, um, really depends on a lot of different factors that uh, take a while to understand. And that's why it's beneficial to have somebody riding next to you to, that, that can understand that stuff. So, so if we were to compare it, you know, the things that we're most familiar with, if we compare it to track driving and mm -hmm. autocross, it's more towards the autocross side because they're a little more aggressive, a little more slippy. Um, or... I'd say actually it's closer to the road racing. Um, okay. The aggressive maneuvers required for autocross, or which tend to be in, in autocross, don't translate well at all to, uh, to rally conditions, loose surface stuff. Because you're already at the limit, you try to ask the car to do something rather than tell it to do something, uh, okay. except, except to catch a slide. Yeah. Um, so just like if you've had experience in the snow, if you rush up to a corner and mash the brakes and crank the wheel, you're going absolutely dead straight, you know? So, um, you have to be very, very smooth, um, which again is more like the high end, uh, high speed end of road racing versus okay. autocross. Yeah. Okay. So there's a chance we have a listener, Santiago, who does rally racing, but you know, he's right probably on. just shaking his head because yeah. our questions are like, so he's like, duh. But anyway, <laughs> I know nothing about rally racing. And so I'm, I'm all in on this right now. And you are actually the majority of, in, in this country. <laughs> yes. So before we started the, the episode, there's, there's, there's also this thing that we're interested in that we may have come to a solution. So there's this thing that we want to try ice racing. I yeah. hear, I hear you might know a guy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, barring any issues with our, our, our continued situation here, um, that is the lockdown stuff, um, right. we, have been, we have produced over the last three years uh, a Subaru winter experience, and we partner with a team out of Sweden who uh, do the same sort of thing out in Sweden. Uh, they're called Flat Out Sweden, actually. Um, and we came together and we uh, produced an event using the STIs and the BRZs on a frozen lake in northern Wisconsin. And it's an absolute blast. <laughs> and, and when will we be seeing you in Wisconsin? <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, February and March. Yeah. February and March? Are we, are we on a lake? Or are we, yeah. Are we yeah. On, yeah, it's um, a little, little lake called Dollar Lake outside of Eagle, uh, Eagle River, Wisconsin. Um, it's a great little community. Uh, it's the snowmobile capital of the world, they'll have you know. 
and uh, and there's miles and miles and miles of snowmobile trails, and it's uh, it's an absolute blast to to be on a frozen lake. That uh, it's very very tricky, but also because it requires so much gentle input and smoothness that it it develops really extreme uh, car control skills, which is a blast to play with. Is this a uh, a BYOS type event? Do we have to bring our own travel? Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say that's not what I thought S was gonna be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I don't know what I don't know what you guys are thinking. Shovel. Yeah. No, Obviously. we have uh, no, no, we have we have our own uh, tow rigs. Okay. However, everyone sits and waits while while you're pulled out of the snowbank. So. <laughs> okay. So yeah. dress dress warm, no shovel. Okay. Got yes, it. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. So in in your course, mm -hmm. what can a student expect on the first day? Um, so uh, we do anything from a very short two-hour program, a half day, a full day, and a multi-day. We just wrapped up the first day of a three-day program, and what they saw today is, is really just building the foundation for, uh, for what they're going to work toward on the next couple of days. Ultimately, what our target is is to take it most advantage of uh, our two-and-a-half-mile course that they end on um, called the Mill Run. And that is a mixed surface, uh, higher speed, third gear, 70, 80 miles an hour, potentially, uh, depending on the grip for the day. But that's a nice high speed course that's quite, quite tricky. Uh, so these first two days are just basically building the foundation and the groundwork to, to get the most success out of that course. Um, so it starts a little slow and that we want to ensure some really good foundations based on um, understanding braking, understanding the feel of the car and acclimating to the different surface. And then we start to, to ramp it up over the next uh, couple of days. So is it different courses as you progress or is it drills or is it a mixture? Or... We do, um, so our, our cycle for each half of the day is uh, we do a uh, classroom portion that we'll talk about the exercise they're going to do and then we apply that exercise onto a course. And that's sort of our formula for uh, two and a half days, basically. So we're able to uh, talk about a theory, uh, try that theory out in an exercise and then apply it to a course. Hmm. So uh, the students that do pull up and, and want to take your course, they just drive yeah. right up. So uh, do they drive up in a rental <laughs> or, do they, or do they drive up in, um, in just their street cars and their race cars? Um, we supply all the tools that are needed um, okay. and actually prefer to do that a little bit um, yeah, mo be because we've uh, over the 10 years of the school, we've uh, understand what works and doesn't. And, and uh, we accumulated some Subarus. They have yeah, their own, exactly. they have their own exactly. shovels. Right. <laughs> you got Man, all their own shovels. If you need a shovel, <laughs> you're in trouble. <laughs> that's a new they saying. They got so I many think. shovels. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a new saying. If you're in, you if so you need a shovel, shovel, you're in trouble. Yeah. You can you can uh, you can use that on your next T-shirt. Okay, the, good. For the school. <laughs> Perfect. That's Perfect. Right. We'll credit you for it. Yeah. That's right. Hey, hey and if anybody yeah. calls and they use the reference yeah. garage here is in training, they get yeah. absolutely the same price as everybody else. <laughs> there's no there's no it. penalty for listening uh, to this podcast. Yeah, I love it. I love it. No problem. Yeah. Uh, so so uh, we supply everything basically. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's a good thing to know. Yeah, it, it helps yeah, yeah, a lot because yeah. when we go race on the West Coast, it's like, how do we get a car there? So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's yeah, a good definitely. thing. So. Yeah. Hey, hey, Vicky, I got an idea. Oh, jeez. Don't don't tell Nate, but you know what we do? You know What's how that? last time we raced on the West Coast, we, we kind of made a side trip? If we made a side trip to this unpronounceable town in Washington <laughs> and then yeah. went to the race... Well, it's not quite Hawaii, but, <laughs> but it looks like it may be fun. But I don't need a shovel. I'm good. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> All right. Oh, sorry, Nate. I, I didn't see you. You're back. How are you hey, doing? Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Welcome back. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So they can, students on their first weekend can pretty much walk away with knowing how to slide. <laughs> well, I sure hope so. <laughs> Even uh, yeah, we, we, hey, yeah, 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 hundred percent, yeah. And, that, and like our approach is it, it to it is also there's a lot of fun factor involved with it too. So uh, we get anywhere from someone who's really excited and and uh, uh, and really into racing and using this for hardcore cross training, uh, all the way down to someone who's just here for fun or have been drugged here mm -hmm. by someone else who thinks this is fun. <laughs> See, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the gateway. It's a gateway yeah. drug. First yeah, yeah, yeah. It really is the gateway. Yeah, right, right, exactly. 
so like do the, you like have, the five hundred dollar um, car for limits, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> you see our you see our air hanger now. Yeah. <laughs> for that five hundred dollar car. So you basically, like you said, you have people that are using you for cross training. So you have mm -hmm. segments of people like long term programs for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most will start with a three day program, and we the major. Uh, industries, for lack of a better word, that, that we pull from is going to be uh, road race. Um, and this is anyone from uh, lemons racing to um, autocross to, um, you know, professional drivers, uh, lots of different people. Then we have off-road racing. It's, it's quite popular down southwest. So we get a lot of top names who have been been through here for, again, similar sort of cross training and to, to stay basically uh, sharp and warmed up um, because our school is a lot less expensive than, than running a trophy truck, <laughs> which yeah. is incredibly expensive. Um, and then actually the stunt community, uh, we have a big, big group of, of stunt drivers who come through for no for way. Yeah. 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 So that's, way. that's fun to work with. Yeah. Yeah. Way. Yeah. It's really fun now, to work with. Now are your courses kind of broken down into uh, beginners and in order to go through that, then you progress, you have a certain checklist you have to meet before you move on or just kind of like, okay, see where we're at now. Yeah, I mean, um, our, our prerequisites start with our advanced programs. So uh, we have uh, one day advanced where you must have taken a one day class. Uh, we have our three day advanced where you must have taken a, a three day. And then we do elite program on top of that. And um, that one is sort of invite only. And then we do a lot of different things in between that are predominantly like private training, one on one coaching, that sort of thing, uh, even if it's uh, shared with another person. Um, and that way we can uh, tailor the curriculum and, and exercise and stuff that uh, based on what that person needs at that time. So I've got a question on our list, but I've got a better question now. Mm. So if, if we were to say to, to arrange for how far are you from um, the Ridge in Washington? <laughs> About two hours, roughly two hours. something like okay. that. Yeah. Yeah. So, what if there was somebody who was dumb enough, I mean, um, uh, smart um. enough, smart enough <laughs> to have a cross platform race where the mm. first day is rally mm -hmm. or this first two days is rally. And then the second day is track. Mm -hmm. That would He's be thinking out loud. That would be Heck fun. Yeah, man. I'm going to talk yeah. to Kathy. I mean, uh, just an idea. Yeah. Um, We'll talk. Don't worry. Okay. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. So I guess the, the, the people at home are sitting there going, well, you know, he's really fun and, and Vicky doesn't know anything about what we're talking about and Bill's just not much better. But what <laughs> could a, a new driver, not a new racer, we'll get to them next, but a new mm -hmm. driver, because one of the things we've learned is that through – some of the training we're doing, it's actually helped our son who's mm. 19 now, but you know, he started yeah. off his first day at the track was in a big downpour on the high banks of Pocono raceway at hundred miles an hour. And he still had his permit, but nice, you know, <laughs> well so, done. Well so, done. You know, I, I didn't say we were the smartest race team, but we're in training, but you know, it seems to help because not only is it a vent for the, you know, the, the youth and the arrogance of youth, it's also a, a good training thing because the, the best, accident is the one that you can avoid right yeah 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 uh for us i mean you're you're obviously aware of all of the well i'll just say it nannies that are involved in cars now uh, yeah stability control traction control abs all of that stuff which is wonderful saves a lot of lives but also masks uh car control and uh we've seen a severe plummet in uh, just over the our 10 years in uh general car control skills especially for folks who have grown up uh, driving stuff that predominantly has all of that stuff now on there. So um, you can only cheat uh, physics so long before it bites back. So uh, all of the computer controlled stuff is great. However, if stuff gets real and or you're, uh, you hide your plane or you're in the snow or something like that um, and you absolutely lose grip, that's where car control uh, comes in. And so the ability to stay ahead of the car and be aware of, of uh, changing condition and, and avoid an accident altogether, just like you say, that's, um, that's where we've, we hope to uh, benefit new drivers. Right. 
we were we were actually driving back from the uh working on a car this weekend and all of a sudden the volvo took over and was doing steering which we oh. didn't know freaked it, him out yeah i didn't know it did yeah. it either so we're like how yeah. do you get this thing to stop because it was like yeah. i was Anyway, he was but, rustling the car. Yeah. Like, stop telling me I want to go this way. I want to go that he's way. Like, he's like, Vic, the car's driving by itself. Look. Yeah. Like, How do I shut it off? Wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm not That's a control scary. freak at all, though. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. That's didn't, know, didn't know it did that. So yeah. so most of most of the people I think that listen to this podcast are family members. But the, the second small <laughs> group is uh, race car drivers. So what would they get? you know, track drivers, what would they get from going to a rally? How would it help them? Because, you know, have you ever met anybody and said, Hey, are you a good driver? Has anybody ever said no? <laughs> yeah. uh, you yeah. know, so, so they yeah. know everything and they're super fast, but w Obviously. what would the rallies training help them with? Um, it's, I mean, addition, in addition to the car control, it, it really is uh, more situational awareness and then comfort with the car right at the limit. Um, so like you talked earlier about, uh, Vicky being less comfortable with the car, you know, being at the limit and sliding. Um, well, part of that is a fear of how to control the car once it's gone past that, that situation. So if we're, uh, aware of both what the car, when the car is going to break away, uh, and then also confident of what to do with the car once it has broken away, then, then you can have the confidence to, to, to push harder and therefore go faster and faster and faster. I, th I think her big issue and, and her sister who's usually here, uh, their issue is not, they know that that limit's there and they know that they should go past it. I'm just, I think my interpretation There's is. There's a lot of other cars around when we're trying to get to that point. But if you. That's if, the problem. No, yeah. I think, I think the problem is that, but I think the problem is really that you don't know that you can get it back. Yeah. You know, yeah. and if you knew you could catch it. Yep. You wouldn't be so scared to go there. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and again, the only time that we've actually had to put that into effect is actually on a, on a racetrack with other cars around. Mm -hmm. And that's not a really good place to learn how to do that. No, not at all. Yeah. Right. And, and, and you're not alone in that. That's, that's why the majority mm -hmm. of our folks are, are from uh, the track world, honestly. Um, right. You know, they're either trying to get faster uh, or trying to be comfortable at speed or again, can't figure out what they're doing compared to the other guy who's, who's beating mm -hmm. them. Why are they so much faster per lap? Right. That other, other person, other driver, whoever it is, not saying guy, uh, that other person is more situationally aware and more confident with, with the car at the limits, which is where right. you find your extra speed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that's why Jennifer and I have no problem going down to a skid pad because yeah. it's open and there's freedom to practice that. Yeah. So I, I don't think that's something you can just pick up on a racetrack as you're going and learning. That's not the place. I think your fellow competitors would appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, there you go. Yeah. We're all good now, okay? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know you know what I gotta say to that, Vicky? The that? best the best place to handle this. Dun 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 dun, dun. Ice Ice Baby. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, um, do you have a race philosophy or, and if so, has it changed over time? Um, so switching into, uh, Nate racing mode, which is a little Nate, different from Nate instructor mode. Um, mine is definitely never give up. Um, and that's, that's a big one. Uh, a lot of rally and the type of racing I've also done some, some off-road racing as well. And, and that is all about endurance and never giving up be it, uh, if you're far down the field after an incident or far down the field because you took a long time to wake up or, or whatever, never give up. You never know what's going to happen with the rest of the, uh, of your competitors and you might be able to come back and do something regardless a finish is a finish and you should keep pushing. Absolutely. Yeah. C's get D's. I mean, <laughs> C's get the grace. <laughs> All right. That's right. That's right. Um, so, so if we were to, to come up there, like for the next race that's in one of our bucket list tracks, that's mm -hmm. two hours away. Mm -hmm. um, where, once we, once we know, well, let me put in quotes, once we know what we're doing, is there much rally competition? 
like an endurance racing, I know how to find those. Is there much yeah. rally in, in the U.S.? Because I, th- I always think of it more as a European thing. Yeah, you're you're right. And that's that's sort of uh, rally has always been in the on the fringe over here. Um, we've had even world championship events here uh, back in the '80s and even in the '70s, um, but it's sort of like up and down and up and down and up and down. Now I think it's probably on its biggest upswing for a very very long time. Uh, for probably 20 years, it's on its biggest upswing. Um, mm-hmm. And so more events are happening. Um, the accessibility of more, you know, rally style cars and, and uh, rally schools, um, that, that stuff is out there. Um, and it's sort of a hard sport to get into. You know, you can go down to a track and, and uh, see it at bulletin board if no one's around and find out when the next race is, but rallies are fabricated out of nothing. Um, so it's hard to find a lot of information. So, um, you can find it online. You can get involved with a lot of a lot of it that way, and get more and more involved with it. So, um, rally is growing. Uh, the ARA or American Rally Association is is uh, doing their best to. Um, well, we're all trying to do our best through this particular time frame. Exactly. Um, but they're they're producing events. We have the Southern Ohio uh, Forest Rally that was just uh, was that a week ago, two weeks ago, um, which turned out to be a great event. Uh, because, you know, everyone wanted to get involved. Um, and we have more events on the horizon. Um, sort of the, the good thing about rally, and it's, I don't want to say lack of popularity in the U.S., but we don't have to worry too much about spectators. <laughs> yeah. So we can run events. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, um, there is also rally cross. Um, and there are, I should say, there are really two different types of rally cross in, uh, in North America. There's... Um, the uh, U.S. version of Rallycross, which is uh, basically autocross on a loose surface, and that's incredibly accessible. Um, that's like, you know, a hundred bucks. You bring your own car. There aren't any safety requirements, uh, just like autocross, you know. Okay. Um, and then there's also European-style Rallycross, which was formerly uh, GRC, Global Rallycross, here in the U.S., as well as uh, American Rallycross ARX. Um, both of which are no longer here, but that's a much, much higher dollar game there. Um, and that's where it's very fast, very specially built cars are running door to door against each other, um, in very exciting races, but, um, there aren't a lot of those, uh, events in the U S at the moment, but so, so stay tuned, there should be more. (laughs) That would be, that would be fun. So, so where should we look? We should look in the ARA American rally. I would go to dirtfish.com. Oh, <laughs> at, at uh, dirtfish.com. I've heard of that. Yeah, place. cheesy plug, but we uh, we That's launched okay. this year a uh, a new uh, media branch of our company, and um, we are trying to make it the home of all things rally. So we are covering the World Rally Championship. We're covering the World Rally Cross uh, Championship, including it, uh, and then we're also following stuff domestically here, um, and then are really trying to. Uh, progress the sport uh, on all fronts uh, as a separate entity from any of the sanctioning bodies, which have uh, been the uh, driving factors uh, for, for the sport in the past. So if I wanted to find one that's local out here, I could go to dirtfish.com and find one. Yep. Um, or wow. look for American Rally Association as well. Yeah. Oh, we'll that's go to Dirtfish. I like yeah, dirtfish. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I know, th- I know those guys. They're, they're yeah. good guys. Yeah. They're nice people. Guys. <laughs> so, so traditionally, when you're when you're doing our HPDEs, they always talk. You know, it's making sure your vision's good, make sure your throttle application, make sure you're braking, make sure you're you're cornering, and and make sure your awareness of everybody around you. Is it the same for rally? Are the the keys the same because you don't have the car to car interaction, or at least we hope you don't have yeah. the interaction. <laughs> yeah, um, you, you shouldn't. But um, same principles apply, or something different? Uh, yeah, ab- absolutely. Same same things apply. And and the the neat thing about rally is that you it's it's almost just you and the road and your co-driver and everything else that's going on it. But mm-hmm. but you get uh, your own honest uh, attack at that particular road, sort of like time attack, where it's okay. it's just you and your ability to to go as fast as you can get your vehicle down that section of roadway. So. Um, it gives you a lot of, uh, well, it's, it's just you to blame. 
yeah. <laughs> but, but at the same time, you get to focus on just that versus, you know, watching your mirror and, and looking for a pass or anything like that. Uh, Vicky, do we need to send help in there? Yeah, Vicky, Vicky, <laughs> Vicky's being attacked by our dog. That's awesome. She, she wants some loving. <laughs> That's awesome. So. I didn't need you right now. <laughs> <laughs> We are also extremely dog friendly here. So we have uh, five dogs in the office, at least, at least. <laughs> yeah, I think we've got one that's taking full, full occupancy yeah. of Vicky right now. So, yeah. so I'll, I guess I'll be doing the next few questions while Vicky's yeah. tied up or the other dog. Perfect. So you mentioned, um, I, th I can't remember if it was the ice event or the, the Durfish school events. Um, you have, Toyota 86 BRZs, FRXs, whichever. And then you also have uh, Subarus. Uh, is there specific advantages or disadvantages or things you learn better from the front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, four wheel drive, or is it just flavors? Um, yes. So uh, Subaru is our full partner. So uh, unfortunately for me, because I'm a front wheel drive guy, we don't offer a front wheel drive uh, program. So we stick with all wheel drive or rear wheel drive. Okay. Uh, um, and we tend to work a lot with folks on track with rear wheel drive, cause that's typically what's on the track, um, right. for rally and or front wheel drive people. We, uh, focus that into, and, and coerce them into our all wheel drive, uh, STIs. Um, so that makes those, it pretty clear. It's a BRZ then I had since for you guys. Yes. Since you're, since yes, you're yes. Subaru. So, yes, okay. exactly. Exactly. Okay. Whoops. Sorry. Sorry, sponsor. Oh, Subarus they're so, are awesome. They're so different. They are. <laughs> so different. <laughs> yes. This, the BRZ is the superior car in every way. Absolutely. Uh, so, honestly, by the time we get our hands on them, there, there's, uh, there's, yeah, they're all very similar. <laughs> yep. Do you find um, some cars have better advantages and disadvantages? For sure. Um, the all-wheel drive cars are able to get up to speed really quickly. So, um, that is entertaining and can get up to, uh, you know, a higher speed and get the car moving around, which is mm -hmm. something that's, uh, that's good to feel. Um, rear wheel drive, uh, is a lot trickier and teaches a lot more, I guess, finite, uh, control there. So you really have to be on your, on your game and drive the car a lot more, um, uh, I shouldn't say that you have to be a lot more aware of what's happening in order to be very fast. They're also a hoot cause you're just sideways everywhere. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but to carry momentum, you really have to be aware of a lot of what's going on. Um, but front wheel. Um, front, so I'm a front wheel drive guy. Uh, the attributes from front wheel drive, uh, blend quite well with, uh, with all wheel drive. Um, you just suddenly have all the acceleration you always wanted <laughs> with the all wheel drive. Um, so much so that when we introduced rear wheel drive a number of years ago, it took me a while to get comfortable with that because, uh, you know, honestly, your corner entry is very similar regardless of, of platform, but your throttle input is quite, quite different. So every time the car goes sideways with the front wheel drive, you want to be on gas to help pull the car out. Um, and so every time the car went sideways with rear wheel drive, I was backwards. Uh, <laughs> uh, Vicky knows the feeling. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Vicky knows the feeling only the other way. Yeah. yeah, yeah so right does that on. wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, um, what model of Subarus are you racing in your school? We have, uh, for all wheel drive, we use, uh, the STI, the WRX STI. Oh, uh, yep. And then for the rear wheel drive, we use the BRZ. Okay. I don't know what they are. I'll have to, I'm going to Google Liam, those listen, right after this podcast. Yeah. Listen, listen, Liam's car outside. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Little different batch is the rear wheel okay. drive. Okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very good. Yeah. She's, she's really good at learning and really good at, and actually she's a really good mechanic, but I'm she's, right here. she's not terribly, <laughs> she's not terribly good at the jargon yet. She's still working on it. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Not a not a complete nerd yet. No, no. Uh, no. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. She's probably good better when she doesn't have a hundred pound dog sitting on her head either. So. <laughs> <laughs> she's got the, uh, the biggest earmuffs ever. Yeah. So, so, Sorry, so guys. So pretend that, pretend you know somebody wanted to 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 start making a a rally race car. Mm. I, I I don't know. 
there's people who have problems with cars and buy too many of them. But what yeah. would be some of the first changes that they would make to like a street car to make it into a rally car? Um, I'm imagining so shocks. <laughs> yeah, honestly, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of stuff underneath of that. That's a true mechanic right there. Uh, I just want to get a list for her. I mean, for yeah, sure. there you go. There you go. Uh, the, the cool thing is within uh, a few specs, the, the cage that's safe for a road race car is similar to what's required in a, in a stage rally car. Oh, okay. Uh, the main difference is, of course, uh, your suspension. You need more ground clearance, considerably more ground clearance, um, and and a, a skid plate underneath the car um, to help protect it. Um, and then, uh, you know, a lot of people are running like some underbody protection. For us, that's a big sheet of, of plastic, um, and that cuts down a lot on both uh, the wear and tear underneath the car, but also the noise, because uh, gravel spraying underneath the car is, is deafening. So. Um, it's hard to hear your co-driver if you can't hear your co-driver. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Do you guys have a in-car radios or anything, or do you just yell? Yep. We... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they well, don't we yell. Gotta, we got to save it for karaoke. <laughs> save our voice for karaoke. Uh, no, we have a, an intercom system in, in our car, so, um, and we supply a helmet that has uh, an intercom also in it. Um, so that's that's really really an important tool for us especially um, well, there are uh, specific rally tires as well so just like there are uh, road race tires there's a whole uh different brand of, of rally tires and and uh and different compounds and tread designs and all that stuff as well we might have to we might have to talk about that because the uh hpds we use the in-car radios but they suck <laughs> um Okay, so we got that. So, so let's assume that we're doing a rally, and mm -hmm. are all rallies always two people? Um, yes, yes. Okay. All right. Rally, so. rally crosses are the uh, the difference person. there. Yep, okay. single person. Yeah. Okay, so so basically, uh, what are the tips or or tricks or things that you've learned over the years to learn that new track? I'm guessing it's translating the track to your notes, but is that is yeah. it that simple? Um, yes and no. So um, I grew up uh, super share. I grew up with some pretty poor co-drivers um, and, and also grew up at a time when wow. the drama and, means in the dashboard. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were, I thought Vicky was saying that she grew up with poor co-drivers since we're on yeah. the same team. I was like, yeah, thanks, yeah. Vic. Like, yes. <laughs> uh, well, we, we also didn't have uh, pace notes were actually illegal when I started. So you oh, didn't, wow. You, you didn't know the road at all uh, before you drove as fast as you could on it. So you relied on just How hard a few could it be? sections. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, so I really learned personally a lot of what the, the surface uh, was doing and changing uh, as I drove on it, uh, just through sheer necessity. Uh, and and so I, I learned the hard way, I guess, uh, surface changes and how that reacts to the car. So. Um, a lot of the information that, that um, can be put in the pace notes that um, some people add will be, you know, it's slippery here or grip improves or that sort of thing. Um, because, of course, just like uh, racing anywhere, uh, your grip on the road, your tire contact determines your success. So mm -hmm. if you notice that this is going to be a slippery section, you want to slow down. Otherwise, you're not going to make the corner uh, right. or you're going to scrub speed at, at the least. So. Um, Learning to, to read the road is something that for me was, uh, I find very beneficial because even if your, your co-driver's not on their notes, you are aware of what's happening before you're on it, uh, on that surface change. So if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. <laughs> so your co-driver, the most of the notes are on paper, I'm guessing. Is that right? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. 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 So. Yep. Just, just curious. Did did they ever like lose a page or skip a page? Like it got stuck together. <laughs> very, very common. Uh, Is it very, very common? Yeah. And there are there are funny little uh, tips and tricks that you can use to uh, to stay on the page. Um, and there are um, it's a whole nother world that I'm not even gonna uh, uh, intimidate knowing <laughs> or or give the impression that I know because that's a whole nother world. And there are some very, very good good folks out there that, that have uh, teaching uh, programs that, that go very much in depth into uh, co-driving and, and uh, 
the tips that are involved there. But, but yeah, sa uh, saving a page, being one page ahead while you're ready. So then you can flip the page uh, quickly and cleanly without going two pages ahead, but it's actually quite common. So uh, does, does the driver have a little bit of feedback when the, uh, the guy says, you know, six left and it turns into a one right and, uh, yeah, not not that we can repeat on a family channel. Okay, very well, very well. <laughs> so, Sounds like Vicky at her track. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been doing this for 23 years, mm -hmm. as you said. Mm -hmm. So that has a plethora of stories. <laughs> so can you give me a very good, a bad, and an ugly story? <laughs> um. <laughs> what does this stick out the most? Because I know there's got to be an ugly. <laughs> oh, it oh, wasn't yeah. funny then, but it's funny now. <laughs> um, well, I guess the ugliest. Can I start with that one? Oh, you yeah. can start ugly. Okay. You can do, you can do three like uglies. Ugly. <laughs> you can do yeah. three uglies. We're fine with that. Yeah, that's right. Um, they, uh, the, there's a dating joke in there somewhere. I'm not going to touch that one. But <laughs> <it's> a, <laughs> Where is our podcast gone? BYOS. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, ugliest story was uh, I um, I was uh, too confident into a corner because uh, I it was early on when I was learning pace notes, um, and and by this time I had already had you know four or five years into uh, rallying myself, even more than that actually. So for me, listening to pace so notes, it was last week. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I read the road wrong, didn't listen to the note. I think we even made the note wrong. So I was way too overconfident. Rolled the car. Um, and this was the second stage of the rally. We got towed out, towed back to service. We hammered the car all back out into to, uh, something that resembled the car and got ready to go for the next day. Um, I put a, uh, a used radiator in as my spare um, and it wasn't radiating very well oh no and smart guy didn't pay attention to the cool uh to the temp gauge and we melted the engine down uh, Oof. So uh. wadded the car up and melted the engine down <laughs> on the first stage of the, of the oh second day. So, no yeah so that was that was my ugliest one that was a, that was a tough <laughs> one that was a really tough one um, so how how about go your very good how about your good um, so I had, uh, I lost a very close family member, um, uh, two years ago and, uh, basically was able to use rally as sort of a way to, to get through that. Um, and it was also driving someone else's car and, uh, and his son was co-driving for me. So it was a really cool way of, uh, awesome. kind of bringing someone else into the sport, um, helping that person and supporting kind of their business, um, and we did well with the car and did well at our events. Uh, and then also kind of use that as a, uh, I guess, a distraction, which was probably unhealthy, but at the time it was very healthy. Uh, well, so. the nice thing about the racing and we've, we've talked about it. Racing is great for ADHD people. Yeah. It, it yeah. really is. And it's a great, yeah. it, it, it takes all of your concentration. Yes. But in a good way. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. it's, I can see, I can see you channeling for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So that was good. That, that, I mean, to go and run a rally is not, uh, easy in terms of the organization behind it. Um, all of that. Uh, and being that I had a brand new co-driver, I had to do, you know, the car prep, uh, understanding the base notes, uh, the pre-event prep, doing all of everything. Um, and I wanted at the time to have, something in which I could focus all of uh, my downtime into something else. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, that helped a lot. So. And I'm sure also driving that person's car, showing that person their car's limit. Yeah. Was uh, probably he, like, I didn't know my car could do that. <laughs> he's a very, very top level driver. Uh, so, I mean, it was, it was also an honor to be able to drive his car. Oh, okay. um, uh, he's a very, very fast driver and, and wasn't able to, to race at that time, but his kid was still interested and possibly looking mm -hmm. to drive uh, as well. So, um, so it was, it was cool to, uh, I guess, reciprocate the honor with some damn good results too. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was, that was neat. Yeah. All right. You have a third story for us. A bad. It yeah, it's, ugly. It, it was it was bad for the car, but it was entertaining. Um, okay. 
Uh, so the way I lost my first co-driver, who was my high school buddy uh, that we were excited about getting into rally, and I threw and through a rally nerd from day one. So uh, we uh, had rolled the car um, and uh, just put it on its lid, and we were waiting for some fellow competitors um, behind us, who were a couple bar cars behind us, to show up. And you seem to do this a lot. <laughs> no. <laughs> That is 23 years, okay? <laughs> okay. All right, go ahead. It's that, it's that yeah. one time. Yeah, yeah. Just that yeah. one time. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, I haven't hit a lot of walls, but I've rolled a couple cars. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the, we're, the car is on its lid. Uh, we're waiting to – the tradition is if your car breaks or you wreck it or whatever, you have to moon your fellow competitors who are going by uh, the, after you, uh, of course. So my co-driver at the time – um, he was, he was wearing boxer shorts underneath his, his driving suit. Um, and when you wreck you, uh, the back of your route book, um, has a red cross on it. If you need a medical help or it says, okay, it's a gigantic, okay. Um, so that drivers, as they go by other competitors know that you're okay. And they, they don't need to stop and render assistance to you. So he's standing on top of the car that's rolled. Uh, and he pulled his driver's suit down. He still had his boxers on. He was holding the OK sign in front of um, himself. <laughs> so it looked like he was buck naked standing on top of the car with, uh, with his <laughs> so I said, OK with the OK sign. Yeah. <laughs> and I was on the other side of the road on the embankment, like <laughs> looking down, watching everybody, and everybody's driving down going. <laughs> so you know. So yeah. If, if he so, was smart, he would have put the needs assistance. Yeah. <laughs> well, there aren't a lot of ladies in rally. I will say. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's and, a good one. And the, yeah. The, the, so, our the funny thing was, the other guys that we were waiting for wrecked earlier in the, <laughs> in the stage. <laughs> didn't even make it to us, so. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> well, we never got that story before, Vic. <laughs> no, no, that's all. <laughs> What's the one thing that's really great about racing? You never know what to expect. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Not at all. All right, Nate. <laughs> now it is time for the Fast and Furious story time questions. Okay. I'm going to get to know you just a little bit better and get mm. have you get to know yourself a little bit better. <laughs> okay. So we're going to start off with what was your very first car? Um, so I grew up, uh, in a family of sobs, as I sort of mentioned there. Um, <laughs> my family has a very large collection of, uh, vintage stuff. Um, so quite a large collection. My dad and my uncle both have, uh, a big collection of the old, uh, two stroke stuff. Um, and, uh, so my uncle also is the same one who got me into rallying. Um, Saab originally proved themselves and proved themselves as a, uh, as a stout competitive car through rallying. So, um, and you have first... all the parts. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> let's, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. So my first car was a 1975 Saab 99 EMS. Ooh, that's a new one. That's good. What was your yeah. worst car? Or, or probably at this point, you know, it's a dumb question because he's, it's he's probably got probably the one that he wrecked the second day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that was that was a great car. That was Black Beauty. Yeah. She she yeah she put up with a lot. Uh, <laughs> no, I my worst one. There isn't really a good story. It just ended up being kind of a lemon. It was a it was a sob, unfortunately. But um, but yeah, it just had a lot of electrical issues. Um, yeah, and it was just ugh. Yeah, I hated That's that no one. Fun. Yeah, it has a lot of knuckle marks in the dash, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I do. I do. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. hate the ones where it, it, like, works some of the time. Yeah. It's, if you don't work at all, I'm good. Okay, we'll yeah. figure that out. But when it's, like, yeah. every now and then, it's like, oh, you're killing yeah. it. Yeah. Don't this one was, it, it starts, runs, it's beautiful. However, the windows turn signals and wipers don't work. And I found that out on a very rainy, dark day. Ah. Uh, uh. At yeah. a toll booth. <laughs> we don't really have those out here. We don't have a lot uh, of those. We have, we have the drive-through ones. Yeah, no fries yeah. with that. Okay. No. Oh. Um. Well, automatic or stick? What's an automatic? Okay, very yeah, good. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We're with you. Um, We're with you. Is that the transmission with the letters? 
<laughs> I think so. Okay. So something like D for dumb. Yeah. I don't know. So what I've is never, one? I've never owned an automatic. Never. Own, no. Nicely yeah. done. Yeah. <laughs> so what is the one thing that no one knows about you that would surprise them? Um, I, well, to get personal, I have massive social anxiety. If that's, oh. uh, yeah. So I really struggle with that. Oh, uh, wow. I hope you're not uncomfortable now because you're doing freaking awesome. <laughs> no, no. It's something that you work on, and uh, as always. Um, and, you know, leading a classroom is really intimidating. Uh, being around other, a lot of people is really, uh, it's a challenge. So, yeah. So, wow. It's uh, my one super share. No worries. There you go. Yeah. So who would be your favorite race driver? Uh, I would have to say um, all of my heroes tend to be Scandinavian. Um, but top of that list for a long time growing up was, uh, Stieg Blomqvist. Um, I'm not sure if he's like the reason for this Stieg, but, um, uh, anyway, that wasn't necessarily the reason for it, but he's, uh, he's still rallying. He started rallying in the sixties and is still rallying, uh, for the most part off and on uh, That's awesome. to this day. And he was a 84 world champion. So while you're racing front wheel, rear wheel, Four wheel, how do you prefer? I like front wheel drive. Uh, it's what I started with and that's mm -hmm. what uh, I, and I think there are, it, it always uh, brings up that response. Um, I like the uniqueness of it. And in a rally situation, a loose surface, um, the extreme corner attack that mm -hmm. you sort of have to use in order to, to be successful with front wheel drive is what I like. So, mm -hmm. um, you anytime that the car is sideways you're needing to use throttle to help straighten it so if you're confident with the car you can enter in you know backwards and your foot, <laughs> your foot needs to be on the throttle and if you don't you uh you stuff it or you go off backwards so uh you need to be uh committed and i like right that. <laughs> yeah you hear that you hear that Vicky? i learned the hard way yeah yeah <laughs> yeah well we all have uh, yeah yeah <laughs> so so looking back what is that one car that got away you know I, there are probably far too many um it's probably some stupid sob uh, <laughs> <laughs> not the one with the electrical issues uh, no 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 that one good riddance it's a sob. Uh, yeah 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 <laughs> No, I don't know. I, I've um, I've sort of put all of my my disposable income in uh, what little there is most of the time, in, in the race car or the rally car, I should say, mm -hmm. or some form of racing along there. So I haven't ever been that uh, concerned really with uh, trying to go for a fancy car or looking for something special on the street because in my my weird twisted brain that was all money that could have been put towards racing or the race car or something. Right. Um, yeah. So I've never really had the fancy car that's gotten away. And if I have a need to go mess around with cool vintage cars, I can just hop over to my, my, my dad's. <laughs> there my you go. Now we're talking. So what is one of the coolest vintage cars that he has? Yeah. What is one of the coolest vintage cars that um, he has? Um, let's see. What is the coolest? Um, my favorite is, uh, well, I have a couple favorites. Um, he has a, uh, it's a DKW or an auto union. Um, that's one of the four rings that formed Audi. Um, it's a one ton van with a 900 CC two stroke engine in it. Um, it's called wow. a Schnellaster. Um, it is incredibly cool. God bless you. Yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but there are a lot of good memories with it because we used to go, he and I went camping with it and, and stuff like that. So it was, a, it was a lot of fun growing up with that thing. I'm looking awesome. that up right now. <laughs> I, can't, I, I would, but I can't spell it. So yeah, let me know what it looks like. Vic. All yeah. right. So, so the question that, you know, when anybody finds out you're a race car driver, uh, what's the fastest you've ever driven in a car? What car and where were you? And if it wasn't that a track, you don't have to answer where. <laughs> the fastest on a closed course. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Uh, I think um, uh, my speeds haven't been that high, to be honest with you. I think the fastest I've been has been about 140, 
I mean, 50, somewhere around that range. Most people, most people don't go much faster than that. We've only had a couple. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're, uh, extreme experienced, uh, teachers and instructors. So they, yeah. Yeah. They yeah. get to drive a little, little better vehicle than usual. So. Right. Um, and that was a, a Mitsubishi Lancer evolution at, uh, Pacific raceways. Ah, uh, very nice. Yeah. All right. So, you know, we, uh, we're going to win the lottery someday. Uh, it's it's going to be one of those days where we actually play it. Um, but um, when we Can't do, win if you don't play, no, no, that <laughs> seems to be the rule. So so far, so far, that rule is intact. Um, yeah, yeah. So when we do, we're we're trying to give away uh, desert islands, not deserted islands, but desert islands yeah. that have a racetrack on them. And we yeah. want to know, you know, we got to place your order. What five cars would you want on your track? And your track, in your case, can be. Uh, any kind of track well uh there's race fuel at this magic island right lots of race obviously fuel. i mean you know we don't play this lottery to lose <laughs> nice win big or uh, go home yes uh i would well i'm a group b rally car fan so i would have um man i'd probably say the sport quattro is my favorite uh okay. the s1 e2 um and probably a delta s4 uh and an rs200 um you're, you're really slumming there uh, yeah i know, I know. <laughs> for group a cars i would love something italian like a delta integrale this is how skewed i am i'm like i'm going basically all for for rally cars uh, it seems that way <laughs> yeah uh what was that was that three or four that's that was four. four that's four uh and then a, a trophy truck and a trophy, trophy truck yeah okay yeah yeah I'd, I would love to see your uh, design for your track, by the way. That would be quite fun on this island. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you could only drive and race a car from one decade in the past, what decade would you choose? Um, oh, this is going to lead me to a, a period or a, a car that I totally left off the list. Oh, um, story. <laughs> probably the 70s and a, a Mark II Ford Escort. I love um, the 70s. I don't yeah. know why. <laughs> The events were still long. Rally was still what us purists would call real. Um, there were long endurance events. The cars were still predominantly production based. Um, and it was, you know, a big engine and a light little car and uh, it was sideways a lot. So uh, it'd probably be the era I would go for, yeah. Nice. So if you were to build your, your dream rally car or your dream race car, just mm. I'm, I'm guessing which way this is going to go. What, <laughs> what, what, what car would you start with? Um, you know, for, uh, I, I really like two wheel drive stuff. Um, I like the, the challenge of it. I like the ease and maintenance of it. I like the options for it. Um, and I like also the, the, <laughs> the David and Goliath uh, mm -hmm. aspect of it as well. Um, so, you know, I've always thought that it would be great to inject a little bit of uh, America into uh, the U S. So uh, I, I think the concept of like a really properly done uh, bizarre muscle car of some sort would be oh, hilarious. Wow. It would be hilarious to do. Okay. Um, and uh, even to the fact of like adding a mullet to your helmet or something like that, uh, oh, nice. that'd, be, that'd be fantastic. But hey, uh, <laughs> you're gonna make your your flat, flat brim brothers out there very unhappy with you. Yeah, 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 you know? exactly. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, aside from that, I'd probably do something uh, rear wheel drive because there are a lot of options. Um, unfortunately, there are a lot more options out there in terms of gearing and gearbox op. Uh, setups and, and uh, uh -huh. lots of different uh, engine configurations that you could be added to uh, it, at least in the u.s um that you could set up you can make a wicked quick um rear wheel drive car at the moment hmm. cool yeah vicky hates my question this is the only one she refuses to ever ask jeremy <laughs> hammond may chris matt other uh may absolutely okay. yeah Very nice i think the guy's hilarious um, <laughs> he is funny you're, and you're uh, i think he's incredibly intelligent uh the rest of his uh you know portfolio is very diverse so he, he has lots of nerdy stuff that mm -hmm. i i would geek out on as well and you really wouldn't ever be threatened by his driving 
<laughs> so so we're driving home the same day that the Volvo decided to take over for us. And mm-hmm. apparently uh, James May is running for office locally. <laughs> so we've got all these like signs on the on people's, you know, vote for James May, James May for blah, blah, blah. I don't even know what it's for. I'm just sitting there going, yeah, wow. That's fantastic. Who knew we lived nearby? Yeah. So, so uh, where would your ultimate road trip be in what car? Um, well, I'm a kind of a glutton for punishment. I have, uh, I've been uh, fortunate enough to have raced in, in the Baja 1000 a couple of times. Oh, wow. um, so, you know, talk about punishing. That is very, very brutal event. However, it's also one of the coolest things I've ever done. Um, and I've been lucky again, say lucky again, but I've done it a, a few times and I would, I would do that. I would love to have a properly supported team uh, and be able to attack that. Hmm. Uh, there seems yeah. to be a, there seems to be a theme to this, but go ahead. <laughs> um, so what is your favorite car movie or favorite car from a movie? Uh, not really a car movie, but Ronin. Really? Okay. Yeah. I That's love it. We haven't, yeah. we haven't had that one yet. That's kind of surprising, actually, thinking about it. Yeah, I mean, De Niro, yep. obviously, it's going to be awesome. Uh, yep. There's great driving in it, like yep. legit driving in it, no CGI yeah. stuff. No. Uh, yeah. real, real stunt drivers and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So, <laughs> Vicky's favorite question. Uh, <laughs> I, I guess she's skipping it. Seems like well, it. I, I think my, all right. So what car would you love to switch into that you're currently racing or raced in the past against and at what race track? Or rally. Um, or rally. Yeah. Um, we might raced as well just against, stay on theme, right? Raced against, I would say, um, uh, there is a gentleman in the U S um, uh, named Seamus Burke who has a very, very, very cool Mark II escort. It has a Mustang V6 in it, um, a sequential gearbox, beautifully designed suspension, big brakes. And that is, uh, yeah, the lust is strong for that car. I would love an <laughs> opportunity to drive that in anywhere. <laughs> Even in the parking lot, I think I'd be down to drive that thing anywhere. Uh, right, but Seamus. that's sort of like, yeah, exactly. That's sort of like the, the, the theme there of building a ridiculously awesome rear wheel drive car. That's mm-hmm. like top of the list right there, yeah. So Seamus, if it has ever a key, keep it close. Yeah. <laughs> keep it safe. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, what car would you want to wipe away from history? Uh, Pontiac Aztec. Oh, you don't think that's a rally worthy vehicle there? Everything is a rally worthy. <laughs> Everything is a rally. <laughs> no, I, I, uh, so my previous life prior to Dirtfish, I was involved with, uh, press fleets. So we would deliver press cars to journalists for them to do a test drive. Um, and I also do, did events and that sort of thing. And that's, um, we were lucky, question mark, enough to have the first Aztecs that arrived in the Northwest. And uh, I have honestly never been flipped off and not deserved it. Uh, and I got flipped off in traffic by just sitting in it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's yeah. not your fault somebody didn't have taste. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to the Pontiac engineers at the time. but Did you have the tent out or were you just, you know... Uh, we were just laughing about that today. I tried to put the tent together. Um, and okay, I probably should have read the directions a little better, but I gave it a good crack and I couldn't figure it out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Like, you know, the first part thing. that was a problem was you didn't stop. You just kept, <laughs> you kept driving. So, okay. so yeah. what, is, what is your favorite track or favorite place to drive so far? Um, you know, uh, rally wise, dirt we fish have some, rally school, dirt fish rally school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I mean, we well, have second, some f- second to the Dirtfish Rally second School. Second to Dirtfish, you know, yeah. You know, some- yeah, yeah. We have some fantastic roads up here in the Northwest that we've used for uh, several, several rallies up here, either the Olympus Rally, Duop Rally, um, Tour de Force, whatever it might be called, usually the same areas. There are some fabulous roads up here. My favorite is the Brooklyn Tavern Stage, um, which is actually a county road that's unpaved that goes up and over this little mountain. It's a seven mile, uh, sorry, 10 mile run. Um, and it's a, it's a blast. Is it on the way to the Ridge? Uh, it could be. Okay. That's the perfect answer. 
it's closer to the ridge actually than it is to here. See? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And it's a trip. reason and a reason why I don't like the Camaro is because I got a flat tire on it and it was a rental. And did you know they don't have a spare tire? And yes. did you know that there's no uh, cell service in the uh, Brooklyn Tavern stage? Not yet, but yeah. I'm willing to try. <laughs> Did yeah. you have like a mirror and just started flashing like sunlight <laughs> back out at you? Put uh, SOS on the ground with stones? <laughs> yeah. In, a, in hindsight, I probably should have just ran the thing set up on flares the, on the rim back to wherever I could find it and left it there. Uh, I actually I actually missed a wedding because of it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Always oh. take the insurance. Well, Nate, thank you so much. This was a whole lot of fun. <laughs> It yeah, really absolutely. was. Absolutely how can was. um how can our listeners uh, keep in contact with you or follow you and your team? Uh, I basically live at Dirtfish for the most part. Um, so uh, go to dirtfish.com and uh, you'll find lots of information about the school, uh, lots of little tidbits on driving, as well as a lot of info on rally. Um, any questions directly, nate at dirtfish.com. That's my uh, email address. Um, and then the usual social media stuff. Kind of an Instagram guy. Kind of uh, gotten away from Facebook lately, but uh, it's just eight underscore tennis. So, yeah, right. you'll see. Uh, you'll see the the DKW on my Instagram page. So nice. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you for coming. I think that the uh, rally is going to uh, be one of our next little cross training events in this uh, Wisconsin. Seems very very appealing because I don't think we have any races in February. So. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So we might have to uh, make a trip. Might have a team event. We'll, yeah. uh, we'll definitely do that. When when do we need to register? Just you know, mm. for the planner in me. Uh, yeah, um, we start thinking about that closer to winter time. So October, November, uh, we'll okay. be looking to do that. Um, yeah, and again, fingers crossed that that things are going well there. And, and, for sure, uh, we can get our our Swedish crew, and you get to work with Patrick Sandell, who's uh, a top. Uh, he's actually a junior world rally champion um, wow. who runs the, the program over there. He's a fantastic guy um, with a really cool crew that he brings over, including a Swedish chef. <laughs> I could start making my Muppets jokes right now, but I'm going to. I know. To I, I, I was just thinking Muppets. <laughs> Tur turns out they don't understand those jokes. So. <laughs> no sense of humor. No, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, sir. Well, we appreciate yeah. it. Thank you for coming on. And if anybody Absolutely. wants to uh, learn about rally, we would say go to Dirtfish Rally School, especially if you're Absolutely. near Washington. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you very much. It's been a no pleasure. Problem. Thank you, sir. Have a great night. Yep. You too. Dominating with Dawson. Okay, Ben, we were talking about uh, the different ways that a car uh, goes around a turn. And, you know, when you're, when you're doing the first level model, you always think about, you know, a standard 90 degree turn going around the racetrack or left or right, doesn't really matter. But there's other things that you need to think about that affect that turn, right. such as whether the turn is on camber or off camber, whether Vicky knows what camber is. <laughs> Still working on camber. Camber. Yeah, you learn camber, I learned camber at Gingerman. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So, so let's just go through a couple of the things. If the turn is on camber or off camber, how does that affect the way the car is going to behave? Well, on camber, that's the same as like uh, when you look at NASCAR, where they race at Bristol, that would be on camber, big banking yep. in your favor, right? Bank, bank back toward you in the car. So that means that's on camber or banked. Oh, it's a cute puppy dog. Yep. Ziggy has made um, her, his appearance. <laughs> so so on camber is going to help you it's kind of like driving into a pocket so you're going to have more grip than you would with a flat with a, you know, the flat turn or a turn that's off camber or banked away from you. okay and then off camber would tend to make the car push or or less responsive and the on camber would right, make right. it a little more responsive yeah the car is more likely to rotate with your inputs more easily in an on camber situation where the, the turn is the turn is banked the same way that in the same direction it's going. Okay. What if the turn isn't absolutely smooth? What if there's like a dip or a bump? Should Ooh, you, bonus. Should you? <laughs> well, one of those is a bonus, I think. I'm not sure both are a bonus. <laughs> uh, I mean, these are, you know, surface variations or things that you have to account for. And plenty of times in my experience, 
it's been people who are like, you know, hey, you got to watch out for the so and so. Does that really mess you up? Like, uh, I remember when I first started driving at Sears Point, I was driving limits, and people were like, oh, watch out coming out of turn seven. There's a big dip, and if you hit it wrong, you know, you're done. Of course, I was out there driving cars that had like nine horsepower, so I'm sure I could hit, you know, I could hit a speed bump and nothing would happen. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, but, you know, even driving pretty hard, I, I would I would come out of turn seven as hard as I needed to, wherever I needed to. I never hit I never hit a zip that you know was gonna, was gonna send me off into the stratosphere. So uh, you have to listen to people when they talk about variations and you go to a new track and somebody's like, Hey, you gotta watch out, there's a big hump going across the so and so or whatever. Pay attention to it, you know, feel it out for yourself. Half the time in my experience half, in my experience are people warning you about some legendary foible or dangerous thing in a track, it's not anything like so I, I think uh, you have to pay attention to it, but if it's something that's disruptive, you know, you, you have to account for it with your speed. You, know, you may have to go through it, you know, 10 miles an hour slower than you would if there was no big dip there. Like I think turn 17 at Sebring is a big, good example of that. It's a turn that would be pretty quick, uh, but it's, it's got, it's like rough as a cob. So, you know, you just go through like just bouncing, 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 just trying to keep the car from getting out of shape. So you can't go through as fast as you normally would. So that's, that's a place where if you go watch some videos of turn 17 at Sebring, a good example of, of, of kind of one of the worst case scenarios what about if it's a, a a hill and by hill that could be something scary like turn 12 at road atlanta or it could be just a you know a, a crest something where you crest and you you come up yeah. the hill and then you go over the hill is that going to affect you sure and, like i think you brought up a great example with road atlanta so you kind of got bookends at either end of that straightaway so the first turn is a turn where you kind of are diving up into a up into a hill. It's cambered in your favor a little bit, so you you get to uh, you get to rotate better. But also, you get the, the added compression of a hill, which helps your braking. So you don't have to hit the brakes as hard as you would if you were headed, you know, in a flat surface or headed downhill. So uh, you know, if you're headed downhill, you got to brake a lot harder. So if you're headed up into a hill, into a fast turn like that, like turn one at, at Road at Atlanta. Um, yeah, the the the, uh, the hill gives you a little bit of help. The the camber gives you a little bit of help. But then again, coming down the other side, I think it's still you still get some benefit of camber coming down turn twelve. But it's just scary because you're going so fast and yeah. it's it, and it's so open. So um, that in, in that case, I, I don't know that the, the hill is hurting you as much as your just your natural fear of being dead. But yeah, I mean, you you come slamming down that hill and you have to be aware of the fact that you're you're headed downhill and that. Yeah, that, that's that's pushing you harder than you would be if you were just coming across that same radius as a flat corner. So yeah. So road Atlanta story time. So I'm still in the midst of parking my trailer, and this guy walks <laughs> up to me, and he's like, "Have you been here before?" I'm like, "No." Or you know, road Atlanta has probably the most intimidating pull into the trail the tracks <laughs> area. <laughs> yeah, it does. Because you, really you go through, you go through the gate, and then all of a sudden you're falling off the table down the hill, and then you're going back up the hill, and it's just like, I can't even drive into the track, never mind on the track. So anyway, I'm talking to the guy, I'm still backing up my trailer, and he's like, "Have you been here before?" I'm like, "No." He's like, "Well, there's one thing you can't do: never, ever lift going down toward, through twelve, or else you're, <laughs> or else you're in the wall." Never listen to people who tell you stuff like that. That's what you never do is you never listen to people who tell you junk like that. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there going, uh, all right, I guess. I don't know. But it's 33 degrees and raining. I'll tell you, this little fisher, his butt was puckered. And, <laughs> and I was making diamonds, baby. And there was no chance I was going down that hill flat, flat, not lifting at all. But anyway, I was just like, you, you're a crazy man. So that was the same team that, that punted one into the wall during practice on Friday. But whatever. Um, <laughs> so did you also want to talk about curves? Is that, is that part I of the question? I do. I was going to say there's, there's, uh, there's other things. There's, there's curves or candies and all kinds of different things. And, and some of them have the rumble strips and some of them are just painted. How does that affect you and how should you think about the use or non-use because sometimes you want to use them and sometimes you want to avoid them. How would you, how would you incorporate them into your driving strategy depending on their morphology, their shape, their size, their. Uh, I'm pretty much going to sail across any curb that it's there because that's going to increase my geometrical advantage. So if it's a curb that's in my, in, it's in the way of me getting a faster lap, I'm going to just jump right across it. You know, I'm, I'll hopefully, you know, most of the times, 
I would say curving at the track makes sense for where you'd want to be. It's, you know, a genuine apex curve. I've been to a few tracks that kind of missed it a little bit, so you're not really apexing at the, at the curve or anything. But, but for the most part, it's where you want to be, um, you know, at, at the at the outside, inside, and the exit. So, you know, in general, if, there, if there's, a, if there's a, a, a good apex curve and a good exit curve, like, for example, uh, you know, coming out coming out of turn 12 at Road Atlanta, you got – you know, it feels like a, it feels like it feels like six inches of curve, and I guess it's a couple of feet of curb coming out of coming out of turn twelve. So I'm figuring that in as part of my exit. I mean, every time I'm coming out of turn twelve at Road Atlanta, I'm expecting to land my left side tires out there. So, so curb to, curbs are surface to me as long as they make geometrical sense to run across them. As long as they're not too punitive. Um, there's a few cases like CMP's got a couple of places where the curbs are such a so much of a washboard that it actually bounces the car around too much or I'm not even sure it slows you down. But it's just it just beats you to death to get out there. We've had it like knock our exhaust off before, stuff like that. So you have to be you have to be aware. There's some curves so rough that it might shake something loose off your janky ass race car or something like that. So you want to kind of be aware of mechanical damage. And also, almost always at the end of a curb, there's a big drop off. So at the beginning and the end of a curb, you don't want to join. You don't want to just jump right at the end of a curb or jump off off you know, jump right at the beginning or fall off the end of the curb. For the most part, you want to be done with the curb well before it's over you know, generally cur- generally the curbing is longer than what you actually need to be on it because yes. just usually there's like a hole and a divot because people keep always dropping their wheels off there so yeah. that can really damage your car so use curbs yeah. but you have to know what you're doing yeah i uh i use the uh the short side curb entry one time at mid ohio and i never 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 did it again because it was like hitting a curb curb like yeah, yeah. I mean, so if, if if the profiling is 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 wrong for the racetrack, I mean, if, if it's not a curb, you can gently kind of slope up onto. If you're worried the curb is going to hurt your car, definitely skip it. But you know, for 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 my home track, VIR, which we always talk about, I, I've never heard of this track. Which track is this? <laughs> there's a, there are probably only a couple of curbs on the on the on the full course lap that that just don't make sense for me to hit. So I you know either run right next to them or just not near them. Um, and, and it's uh, sometimes it's depending on what car you're driving. So you know, we talk about sometimes there's a horsepower line and a, and a momentum line. So that that might vary whether or not you're stomping over different curves. But for the most part, um, if, if the curb is there, if the curbing is there, and it helps me get a better advantage and a better line around the track where I've got to be, you know, where I can get back in the throttle and get the wheel straight faster, I'm going to be all over that curb. I've driven maybe one race car it wasn't mine. I've driven one race car was like, hey, this thing can't take curbs, so I had to kind of relearn driving a lap at CMP with, with no curbs. It was kind of weird, but, uh, you know, it's so, you know, in some cases you may, you may end up driving somebody's car where they say, Hey, this thing can't handle a curb and you just have to learn how to drive without it, but it's not ideal. So there was, there was one other thing about curbing that, that came up. Um, and I think it, you know, I'm not sure I'm brilliant. Well, I'm pretty sure I'm not, but it, it seemed to matter more the surface condition of the curb. If, it's wet or especially if it's a inside the turn curb versus an outside the turn curb because the pressure applied is so much different the one on the inside i really don't care because those wheels are unweighted but the one on the outside that one i I cared more about whether it was a a smooth uh grippy curb or whether it was a rumble strip or, or just like ice if it was wet you agree uh, for, for me i think you know, if it's a, a painted a painted curb or not the the inside curb if it's raining and your car is not rotating as well as you might like because it's raining mm-hmm. sometimes i'll try out those inside curbs to help me kind of yank the car around get the car rotated without me having to let off as much or go as slowly mm-hmm. um, so i'll at least always feel out the curbs on the inside curbs on the rain as far as like, trying to get on the outside curbs or worry about the condition that those are in you know, if it's the rain, you're probably not driving so fast that you're forced out there. So you definitely have time right. to work your way out there and see what they feel like. I mean, we talk about driving in the wet. I'm sure I've talked about this before, but my first and only time driving at Watkins Glen, we started a sort of wet race. And just the just the line uh, that denotes the, the pit lane, the, the, yep. the sort of a separate lane you get into going to pits, yep. just that line coming through turn, I think that's a turn 11, the last turn. Mario, is that the right turn number? I think it's 11. It's 11 or 12. I can't remember. Okay. Whatever the last turn on the, on the straightaway is, just coming coming across that relatively fast turn, I hit that little six inches of yellow, and it almost threw me completely off the track. So 
it's, it's definitely worth your time in a, uh, in a wet conditions to, to feel out where everything's going to do. But once you figure out areas that you can exploit, like maybe there's a couple of inside curbs that you can use to help you hork the car around while you maintain a little bit better corner speed than the rest of traffic, then you're going to learn what to fear and what to exploit. And it's probably going to be changing every lap, but curbing is probably going to need to be part of your brain racing strategy if you want to dominate. Yeah. The other, the other thing that we've noticed, especially when we do the track walks is the, uh, Sometimes there's little patches and they can be either something you aim at or different, different grip in different areas. Or sometimes there's actually a pavement change, like uh, part of the track is concrete versus part of the track is asphalt. And you're shaking your head no, so I'm an idiot. So what did I say? I, I, I'm just shaking my head no because I hear all that stuff all the time too. And unless it's like an extreme example, which I'm not even able to think of, so as far as we're talking about just driving in the dry, I am never thinking about a surface patch. I'm never like kidding. people are like, hey, watch for this discoloration here, and that's where you break. Or, you know, watch out, this is a little bit less this, a little bit less that. I mean, even kind of there's some big surface variations at place like Barber. Um, you know what I'm talking mm-hmm. about? Have you guys been to Barber? Yeah. Uh, on uh, Not in meat space, but on iRacing. Okay. So, so but in, in, in meat space, there's, there's kind of some varied surface between the exits and the main track and that sort of thing. And, and even between all that, uh, it didn't make any difference to me. Of course, also – you always have to filter any Dawson advice through the fact that I've maybe the most powerful car I've driven on track might have been 225 horsepower. Right. So it's a whole different world for the people who are driving big ground pounders with, you know, uh, multiple hundreds of horsepower. So right. you have to, you have to always filter my advice through like a momentum car filter. But uh, for the most part, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not eyeballing different surfaces or anything like that. You know, if you're hammering around an E36 or a Miata or something like that, mm-hmm. I, I don't think it makes a huge difference, at least not to me, and I hit it pretty hard. Well, I was saying that you could use the, the discoloration to be kind of something to locate your line to or from. Oh, yeah, yeah, people do that. People right. do do that. And then uh, the one time that comes to mind that, that it did apply was, I don't know if you've been to Thompson yet, but it's basically a road course with an oval in it, and the oval had two lines of pavement and one was very smooth and one was very sticky because they had prepped it for i don't know if it was an <laughs> arca course or something so it, it had like right, so the, you, got, you got concrete and asphalt with a pretty big variation right there next to each other right and one of them is prepped with like this i don't know if what the what they call it but anyway it turned the, the surface strip? and yeah it was it was gummy yeah so if it's a drag strip it's probably vht it's that stuff that will pull your shoes off you're standing at the starting line it'll yank your shoes off <laughs> so so there was a difference in the in the pavement in that condition. Yeah. You can either yeah, I, I would imagine so. <laughs> yeah. That's a pretty extreme example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it's just you know it was like okay. And then I've I've been to a, <laughs> a track where it was like you know the the drag strip or the oval was made of concrete and the rest of it was asphalt and you know. So things to take into account, Vicky. Yeah, Jen. I think there, there are things to watch out for, but there are so many things that people at the track will run up to you and go, "Hey, you got to watch out for this. You got to watch out for that." you know take everything with a grain of salt and go feel it out for yourself uh there's a lot of people who like to panic about a lot of stuff that they don't need to worry about in the track so you know true. True. nothing's out there to get you just have fun vicky jen anything no, i'm good okay i just need seat time okay yeah right. seat time seat time is what makes you faster and more competitive which is obvious to you ladies is important which i think is super fun to watch y'all get faster and have more fun with this they will. They will. The I'm one thing excited. I will, the one thing I will say though, when you go to New Hampshire and people say stay off the turtle, stay off the turtle. The turtle will, <laughs> will mess you. The turtle up. will mess you up. Now that's now I, it's true. There there are a few things at my own home track that are like little magic spots where I have to tell people don't do that. It looks like you could do it, but that will definitely throw you off the track. So yeah, you're right. I mean, you have to yeah. listen to what everybody says. Go feel it out for yourself. But I mean. Take, take what, what I think I, my advice is to take what people say into account. Like if somebody's warned me about something, I'm going to watch for it when I go out and kind of give yeah. it a couple of mulligans, but then if it doesn't seem like a big deal, I'm going to hammer it. Yep. Yep. The turtle for those at home is like a uh, four or five inch high bump that has the shape <laughs> of like a box turtle. And it's on the inside apex as you're coming back into the, the, the NASCAR track at New Hampshire. And if you hit that thing, it is a monster. So, so it's like, but it's like the flashing red button and it ran. Yeah. It's like, don't yeah. hit the button. Don't do, hit the button. Do, do it's like, it looks so good. That's exactly right. You're going to hit the button. Yeah. Hit, the button. Yeah. hit the button. Hit the button. Don't hit the button. The button's bad. Don't yeah, hit the button. So words of wisdom from Ben Dawson. Do not hit the button. <laughs> 
All right. Thank you, Ben. All right. Sorry, trying to set up a new computer, probably not the best plan. Yeah, no uh, worries. Select a speaker. I think I got, is it working yet? Check, 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 check. Hey, oh. there yeah. we go. Right on. All right, we're only three minutes late. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. I like the tropical background. That's pretty awesome. Uh, I was trying to get one of our, I got a new computer. Usually it's got like some type of uh, logo from our team, but I yeah. just, I couldn't get it to work. So I was just clicking around and all of a sudden I see this guy's face next to me. I'm like, that's a weird background. I never saw that one before. And, then he moved. and I was like, ah, oh, he's here. Sorry. Oh, he's here. No worries. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. I can hear you. Yeah. Look at my ocean coming in. It's amazing. Yeah, it's very calming and peaceful. Did you see my ocean? We're, we're like eight feet apart from each other, but you know. Oh, nice that we're about uh one great uh bernese mountain dog in the way <laughs> and a door and we're good <laughs> excellent so the, the only problem we have is i'm sure you've uh experienced the concept known as scope creep so yeah so as as we keep having more and more time, we keep coming up with more and more things to fix on the car. And, you know, it's, we're, we're still not done, and we should have been well, racing since. He keeps yelling at me. May. Yeah. He, he keeps yelling over at me about this term. Parkinson's law. I keep trying to explain to her. <laughs> Boy, I tell there you, is time. Was, you will fill it. Yes, I was all excited. I finally had time to go out to the garage, and I was ramping up to get a bunch of stuff done on my car, and then. Then we got busy and it's it's back to sitting on the back burner like it always has been. So mm. yeah. I tell you that's shoemaker's family shoes, right? You know? Yeah. Somehow somehow Bill and I have switched roles where he's organizing the garage and I'm doing the mechanic work because I have more free time during the day. Nice. I'm like So well, you know this five too. What's that? You're better at it too. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's really funny. I'm like, well, you know, when we kinda had this whole idea about getting into racing. I, I think that if it was introduced as, and you're going to be the mechanic, <laughs> why not have jumped into it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, hey, let's start a restaurant. Uh, by the way, you're on dishes. <laughs> I mean, you, you, uh, it grows with time, you know? That's right. That's right. I have seen nobody write back, so it looks like it's just Vicky and I for you today, well, sir. Well, I know that Jennifer's moving her son. Um, he's yeah, getting ready to go away to college in the grad South. School. Yeah, oh, cool. the grad school. So I know that she's probably packing and loading for him. Alan is in the wind somewhere. I have no idea. Alan's our shiny squirrel. We we, uh, we try to figure out what shiny object he's looking at and he's <laughs> running around towards. And... Uh, <laughs> He, he by yeah. far is the most mechanically talented person I have on our team. Yeah. But he's also the most distracted person we have on our team. So. <laughs> That's awesome. It is. It's, it's like our it car is. is broken, but then he sees like over in over in the other side of the garage, there's another car that's broken. Oh, let me go see if I can help them too. <laughs> he's like, broke somebody else's car. Yeah. Gallant, where are yeah. you going? He's like, oh, I just want to see if they need help. I'm like, we need help. <laughs> his favorite thing is no you guys got it no no we don't yeah yeah yeah, yeah. exactly oh. if it isn't on fire then you don't get to play with them <laughs> well even if it is on fire then Vic will stand in the door with the fire extinguisher while i'm yeah. still in the car <laughs> she doesn't let me nice. out but whatever nice but nice well, this is going to be exciting because i want to learn about rally okay yes. so this will this will be good so Perfect. I know I know what it is, and she doesn't. So we okay. we address both ends of our uh, of our uh, listening audience, and we just yeah. So so real quick, um, yeah. we mostly do endurance racing. Okay. Um, we also 
do lots of other driving things like the HPDEs. Sometimes mm -hmm. we'll do autocross, just like we refer to it as cross training. Mm -hmm. But sometimes our cross training turns into more fun than our goal. But you know, that's yeah. that's okay. That's okay too. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is one that we're we're interested in getting into. Um, we don't know much about it, but we're we're willing to learn. And the other one that we want to get into. We want to do ice racing for some reason. We haven't found yeah. anybody to do it yet, but it just seems like let's have less grip. Okay, yeah. this sounds good. <laughs> so it's a it's a blast. Yeah, so. I haven't done any officially sanctioned uh, ice racing, but we do a program. We partner with a, a team out of uh, Sweden, uh, and we pr both together produce the uh, Subaru Winter Experience up in uh, northern Wisconsin in Ooh. February and March, and. Uh, We'll be talking about that later. Yeah, it's a blast. It's an absolute blast. I think I think we have a February or March thing on our <laughs> schedule now. <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed that the world gets back to some sense of normalcy and we can we yeah. can run it again. But uh, yeah, I was but, I was hoping you weren't going to say something in Canada. I was like, oh, we can't go there. <laughs>